Have y'all seen that video about that girl who came on here to let everybody know about the massive HIV outbreak that's taking over uh, Pennsylvania and Texas right now? And I'm talking about cases in the hundred thousands. Yeah, I decided to do my own little research. And when I tell you that being celibate has to be the best thing that I unintentionally did for myself, because it's scary out there. It's scary out there. Like, I, I think that it's, it's about time that all of us women get on prep. Hello, beautifuls. My name is Giselle, co-host of the Strong Tumblers podcast and founder and CEO of The Create App. And I've created specifically for content creators. So if you have a wedding, a business, a freaking baby shower, you can find local content creators in your area. The app should be launching soon. We're in the beta phase. Follow us on Instagram. But let's get into this because I saw this video and I had so much to say because what the hell? What the hell? What the hell on? So the woman in this video was talking about how there's semi outbreaks all throughout the United States right now when it comes to HIV. And the new thing, the new drug out in the market is PrEP. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. And it's a drug now in the market that can help you not contract HIV. The way that PrEP works is by building protective levels of the medication in your bloodstream. So if you do get in contact with the HIV virus, then you already have the medication in your bloodstream and it attacks the virus, not allowing it to take over your body. There's a couple of different PrEP options in the market right now. First, we have Truvada, which is for all genders. Then we have Descovy, which I believe can be used by transgendered men and transgendered women. Both of these medications are daily oral pills, just like birth control. And then you also have a long acting injectable, which is called Apertude, and you get injected every two months. According to the stats that we have, which are not many because the drug just came out, um, <laughs> no shade, no shade. PrEP is said to be 99% effective when it comes to preventing HIV in both men and women, and then 74% effective in people that shoot up things that they're not supposed to shoot up. Some common myths that of course we think of when we think of PrEP would be like it's only for gay men, you know, because if you go through the history of HIV and where it started and what we think, it was mostly a gay man disease. But now we know that anybody can get HIV, not just the gays. So when you see these commercials and everything, that's what they're gonna talk to you, that's what they're gonna say, and they're gonna sell you this dream, right, of being promiscuous, having all the unprotected sex that you desire to have while you're still protected from HIV, which is the big, ugly disease that every, everybody doesn't wanna have. But now I feel like with a lot of the medications out in the world, uh, to keep you below your stats and keep you undetectable, a lot of people, to be honest, to me, it just sounds very reckless. When I first heard about PrEP, the first thing that came in my mind was like, mind you, I do come from a very religious background and I am not religious anymore, I'm more spiritual. And I do practice celibacy for the most part. And when I first saw this, people talking about PrEP and everything, just like birth control, allowing women to feel like they can just have all the sex without the consequences of bringing life into the world. Now we have these new problems and I know that the birth control really allowed women to express themselves not only through not having the children and just being able to have pleasure without the child, being able to finish school because you're not pregnant <laughs> and all these other things. I do feel like a lot of times these chemicals that we continue to put in our bodies have done more harm than good. Just like I believe Osempic, go lose weight the natural way. And if you need help, yes, do the surgical way. But I do feel like a lot of times we don't talk about the side effects, about these medications, these new medications of the stress that we are putting in our bodies, the stress that your body goes through of losing 100, 200 pounds that it took you 20 years to create. We do not talk enough. I remember when I heard about Rachel Hollis's husband dying from a heart attack. And mind you, he was like a fitness guy. He worked out all the time. But before that, he was overweight for a long time in his life. And I feel like people forget that the body keeps score. The body keeps score. Okay, that's why you should, we should be taking care of it the whole time. Because things like this, the wear and tear that we cause from these things that we do, whether it's being obese, whether it's being overweight, whether it's taking these medications, it's gonna catch up to us. And the food that we're eating, don't even get me started on the food that we're eating because I feel like it's also the cause of a lot of the problems that we're seeing nowadays. There's plastics, there's microplastics in our foods, all the chemicals, all the dyes, all, what? 
all the metals, the heavy metals. And I just saw a podcast and they were talking about this, about heavy metals in the baby food. Like we're feeding this to our babies, our children, found in formulas. It's crazy. All over, I feel like all over, they're trying to kill us with something. So when I hear this talk about prep and it being a daily pill that is in your bloodstream to prevent or help you fight infections of HIV, like it sounds good. It sounds good. My friend invited me to church the other day and even though I'm not religious, I went and the pastor was talking about Isaiah chapter something and he was talking about how in this new day and age, good will be called for evil and evil will be called for good. You know, darkness will be light and light will be darkness. Sweet will be called bitter and bitter will be called sweet. I feel like that's what's happening right now. Instead of owning that we have a problem of promiscuity, that we have left, and mind you, I'm not like a saint. I am not like a prude. I'm not a person that's like, you know, I come from that. I come from like heavy religion where I felt like I didn't even, I just felt guilty about everything. A lot of anxiety, a lot of guilt from being, from just sex in general and thinking sexual thoughts and feeling pleasure and exploring that parts of myself. I get it. I come from that. But I feel like we miss, we have missed the mark. We are so far gone that people don't even know how to create authentic connections anymore. Like people are just out here sleeping with each other left and right. People don't even have communication skills. People don't have people skills. Like what? Between the era of the internet and everybody being on social media and everybody just losing sight. We are literally in a loneliness epidemic. We are literally in a loneliness epidemic. And I feel like a lot of us, thank God, have decided to take ourselves from the equation. Because like I said, I practice celibacy. I, and it's not even because I'm religious. It's because I believe in energies. I believe in my body still being a temple and a gift that I would like to share with somebody. It doesn't have to be for everybody. And I'm not saying I'm questioning those people that do want to have sex with whoever they want and whenever they want and all the things good for you. But the norm, the majority that don't want to share those energies that believe in that type of thing. Now we're just not sharing energies. Maybe we're sharing HIV apparently. Because, first of all, in my mind, why would you have an unprotected sex with someone you don't even know? What? And I think a lot of people are get contracting all this because, first of all, we don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to say no. We don't know how to set boundaries. We don't know how to ask for what we want. So we are laying with these people and we're not asking no questions. No questions asked. When was the last time you got tested? Show me your paper. You know what? Let's just get it on. Let's get it on. It's crazy out here. I asked Chad GBT to put me the top 20 US cities with the highest HIV rates. Okay? I live in Florida, mind you. If you live in any of these places, make sure that you're practicing safe sex. Please, please. And that does not necessarily mean that you have to go on prep. That does not necessarily mean that you have to continue to add these chemicals into your body. We do not know the side effects, the consequences. The first thing that come to my mind is like, okay, these chemicals are in your bloodstream and you're taking an oral pill daily. Like, how is that being secreted from the body? How is my body, sec is that going through my liver? Who's cleansing that? My liver, my kidney? Like, how, what? So many questions. But the top cities are, Number one, Miami and Fort Lauderdale, Florida, baby. Number one. Number two, Memphis, Tennessee. Number three, Atlanta, Georgia, which I'm doing a whole other video about that because I the things that I've been listening, the things that I've been hearing about Atlanta, Georgia, and these DL men, and if you don't know, down low men that are gay, but they have full wives and families, crazy. What the hell? What the hell for sure? Number four, 
Baton Rouge, LA. Number five, Jackson, Mississippi. Number six, Baltimore. Number seven, New Orleans. Number eight, Washington, DC. Number nine, Columbia, South Carolina. Number 10, <laughs> Florida, of course, is here multiple times. Number 10, Jacksonville, Florida. Number 11, Orlando, Florida. Talk about the happiest freaking place in the world. Mm. Number 12, Houston, Texas. Number 13, Dallas, Texas. Number 14, Philadelphia. Number 15, Chicago. Number 16, Los Angeles. Number 17, San Francisco. Number 18, Detroit. Number 19, Charlotte. Number 20, Indianapolis. This is crazy. This is insane to think about all those places. Those are the top growing cities right now, today with an increase of cases of HIV. I don't think the answer is to get on PrEP. I think the answer is to freaking find our social struggles and morals and values that we don't freaking have anymore. Like what's going on? Like what is going on? We have missed the mark. We have gone so far past the mark. It's not even funny. So hopefully you get your information, do your own research about PrEP and about if you should have it in your life or not. But to me, abstinence, baby, because right now you're, you're gonna get on prep on the daily dose and then you're gonna get on birth control on the daily dose. All these things affecting our bodies. Let's go with a no on that, okay? But that's all I have to say in that topic. Uh, hopefully more light comes out and more information. But as you can hear, my roommate's in the kitchen and this video is done. <laughs> Ciao, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.